Friends Just Made a Podcast. Two Good Friends Just Made a Podcast. Okay, hi everyone, welcome to the greatest podcast in the universe, Culture Bucket. This is our 74th episode, meaning we are only a sweet 46 episodes shy of the big 120, incredible scenes. And today we are doing a special on another actor that we enjoy quite a bit, the the British actor Andrew Garfield. Love him. And mm. uh, I'm, do- I'm George, obviously, your host. <laughs> And my co-host is Alex. Hi, Alex. Hi, George. Hi, everyone. Hi. How are you doing today, Hi. George? Good, thank you. Wonderful. Um, yeah, slightly recovering from a fun evening, Ooh. which I'll talk about more in Culture Catch-Up. Ah. But I'll get through it. I've got water and tea. Wow. So I'll be fine. Did you get mm. drunk in your fun evening? I did. I did. And I have the remains of a doner kebab slowly making their way through my system as well. But it's fine. <laughs> That's how much fun you had. You also had a doner kebab. Absolutely. That's a lot of fun. That's uh, for me. You know how much I like a doner kebab. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> um, it is time now to talk about... I'm fine, culture. by the way, George. Thank you for asking. Oh yeah, how are you? How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm great, George. Are you sure? I'm great. Yes. Don't miss the days yeah. of donut kebabs. Although I've never really had a donut kebab in my life. Ah, oh, that's. Sad. I've had a shish kebab. That's a lovely thing as well. Mm, but I wasn't really a fan of the mutton. But now I don't eat any of that. So. That's fine. That's your choice to make. That's good. Yeah. And I, su- and I support yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> are you excited to talk about Andrew Garfield movies today? Oh, uh, I'm very excited to talk about Andrew Garfield movies. I have uh, grown a weird obsession. <laughs> yeah, be- be- before we agreed before we agreed to do this episode, how many Andrew Garfield movies had you, had you seen? Before agreeing to this, uh, ep- I, I had watched um, Never Let Me Go, The Social Network, uh, the Eyes of Tommy Faye, Tick Tick Boom, and Spider Man No Way Home. So those are the five films I've watched. And n- now, and now as we sit here today, now, how many Andrew Garfield films have you seen? Okay, uh, including the ones I already seen. Yep. Yeah. Total amount. Nine, nine films. Wow, that is some serious prep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And if I had more time, I would have watched them all because, like I said, I'm slightly obsessed now. And, 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 I will show you that I have encountered Andrew Garfield very, very early on in a series that I watched. Oh. In 2005. Wow. Which I'm going to show all you right. a clip later. Okay, that's cool. Which that's I didn't realise that was Andrew Garfield until I was watching, like, his filmography. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you, well, you, yeah, you wouldn't know at the time, would you, that he was going to be no. Spider Man? No. Um, yeah. So let's get yeah. into it. Let's do some culture catch up. Mm-hmm. This is culture catch up time. This is where we talk about what we've watched, what we've read, what we've listened to, and probably some other stuff. Culture catch up and I'll start with a movie that I watched that's not made my top five Andrew Garfield films, mm-hmm. and you haven't seen, so is can is a is a fine candidate for culture catch up. Uh, Good, it would turn out. And that movie is the twenty sixteen film. Is it twenty sixteen? Let me just check on here. I believe it is the twenty sixteen long two hour twenty minute <laughs> long uh, World War Two movie. Hacksaw Ridge, uh, directed by Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson, a controversial figure. Um, proof, yeah, very proof that um, cancel culture isn't real. 
Although, although it should have been real for him because he yeah, he went maybe. on a very very evil rant. He did. He's he's a he's a tricky guy, but he continues <laughs> to have uh, a career, um, <laughs> including playing Mark Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg's dad in the uh, faith based movie Father Stew in cinemas now. Um, but I haven't seen that, so I'm not going to talk about it. Um, this movie though uh, is he doesn't appear in it. He just directs it, and it is. Exactly the kind of movie you would expect him to direct. It yeah. follows the true story of Desmond Doss, a conscientious objector during World War Two who refused to fire a gun or even hold a gun, so instead trained to be a combat medic um, and was uh, sort of sidelined, belittled by, bullied by, beaten up by, um, and generally mistreated by his peers who mm. viewed his refusal to use a rifle as being, um, you know, pretty pretty bad form, mm. in their view, um, in the American military, this is, uh, until, and that Desmond Doss obviously played by Andrew Garfield, uh, until he goes into combat and during the Battle of Okinawa rescues somewhere between 70 and uh, over 100 soldiers, single-handedly drags them off the battlefield. It's two hours and 20 minutes long. It opens with sort of um, seeing Desmond Doss at home, seeing what his home life is like. His father's played by Hugo Weaving. Um, he meets a girl who he falls in love with. And the first hour or so of the movie is a fairly, by the numbers, uh, historical World War Two drama film of a guy mm. deciding to join the army and going through boot camp and he gets court-martialed, refusing to have a gun, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Then they get to the titular Hacksaw Ridge and the next hour of the movie is just repulsively violent um, bodies being blown apart, etc. Like, think of the, the Battle of D-Day at the start of Saving Private Ryan dragged across, you know, an hour of screen time. Um, mm. All to serve to show Andrew Garfield as being, you know, such a hero for dragging all these people off the the field and i suppose you know whatever your personal takes are on world war Two, generally uh the battle of okinawa etc for that individual man to have repeatedly risked his life to try and rescue people is um commendable i, I mm. suppose um and is, is is an interesting story worth telling um, but the way in which Mel Gibson tells it is is fairly difficult to grapple with in terms of how much it f- sort of forces. God, I've watched so many. I've watched so many Andrew Garfield movies this week. Trying to remember what. Because <laughs> <laughs> the, the crazy thing is, I, I watched I watched Hacksaw Ridge, and then I watched Silence, and they are <laughs> oh so, they came out. <laughs> they came out in the same year, yeah, and they have such different approaches to Japan, yeah, and Christianity, yeah. That trying to remember which is which. I think Hacks- Hacksaw Ridge is very sort of straight down the nose, very Christian heavy. It's like a very Christian movie. Mm. He's you know he's a Seventh Day Adventist, and yeah. he's you know. He's a pacifist for these, you know, religious Bible reasons. Yeah. And there's the like the Christ imagery is the Christ metaphor is crazy. There's a sequence yeah. at the end of the movie where Andrew Garfield comes down off the um because the way that the way they portray it in the movie is that they have to climb up this huge net to get to the battlefield, like this this mm. sheer cliff face. And he comes down from this cliff after after, you know, rope dragging and roping fifty to hundred soldiers down yeah. off it over the course of a day on his own. As it, when everyone else has abandoned it, and he gets down off this cliff, and everyone is saved is there, and he walks. You know, he's a he's a broken man. He's covered in blood and dirt and everything else you could imagine, and uh, he walks kind of through the crowd, and they part for him, and you see like a first person camera view of him walking through as all these people are like looking at him with this reverential view, and it's very clearly meant to be, you know, this man is Jesus sort of thing. It's it's very sort of heavy handed. There's no like. S- there's no room for subtlety in the way Mel Gibson directs this movie. Um, and I really wanted to like it because it's, it's, um, I didn't want to like it, but I kind of thought I would like it a lot because it's, if you look on IMDb, it's currently rated as the 197th best movie ever made. 
in their top 250 films of all time. Mm. Uh, it's like a really highly rated film. Um, but then mm. if you look at Letterboxd, where, which is where I tend to... I feel like nowadays I te- the, the views you see on Letterboxd more closely mm. reflect my own views generally. Uh, Letterboxd people are less enamoured with it. I think it's a bit of a... I don't know. I don't know why certain people love this movie. Well, I could probably guess, but I don't want to be unpleasant. Um, but <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a really weird film in terms of our top five Andrew Garfield stuff. He puts in a very good performance. Mm. Uh, it's it's a it's it's a it's a Forrest Gump style performance. He's doing that sort of voice mm. uh, throughout the movie and is playing you know a, a simple man who knows who he is and what he believes in and, and sticks to his guns kind of thing uh, in a very like Forrest Gumpy way. Mm. But you get, but, but you get to see an hour's worth of people having their, their legs torn apart and no, things like that. Um, so. Yeah, no. And the big problem I have with it, and the thing that really sort of turned me off it is that he massively portrays the Japanese soldiers as just screaming monsters, which is oh, um, I'm not, glad I, oh. yeah, I don't think you would like this movie no. very much. Um, <laughs> No, it's a pity because there's there's probably room to tell this story in a way that fully doesn't glorify what happened there and really sort of mm. wrestles with, you know, because I feel like these these events that in world in world history, you know, they should be discussed openly and talked about and yeah. you know films made of them and things, but they should be done so with an honesty yeah. that tackles the horrible crimes and etc. committed on all sides of of, yeah. of a conflict like that and and you know also has the humanity to see that the people on the ground during these battles were not the people responsible for mm. necessarily the unpleasant horrible things that occurred yeah. uh, you know people i'm sure there are people that would disagree with me but but and that's uh, you why know, people like mel gibson should not uh have in their hands such important films like these you know no i would say so like the historical films that he's done are just from his point of view Except for maybe Apocalypto. Have you seen Apocalypto? No, I haven't. That's a good I, I think I'd... that's just kind one of... of his few good films. Okay. One that's that I think Apocalypto is a genuinely good film. Um mm. uh, that, that that is a very sort of I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. Because it's like look it, at... it feels it feels really amazing. Like do you talking about um uh, um Hacksaw Ridge? That was designed at the same time as a silence, which actually portrays both all sides in a very, I think, neutral way. Yeah. And yeah, very, it does. although it's like two and a half hours long. Longer than that. Martin Scorsese, how long is it? It's two hours and 40 minutes. Oh, long. it was un- endless. I appreciated that film because it wasn't showing, it was a very kind of unbiased film yeah yeah well it's in it because it's 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 about yeah well we'll talk more about science later i'm sure but it's it's about it's about kind of things that were done by japanese people to people coming to the country that are quite horrific but the original novel's written by a japanese author and then the film was made by an american director and i think that allows kind of all sides and viewpoints to kind of shine through in the movie, yeah. which is yeah. not the case in um, Hacksaw Ridge. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so I watched Hacksaw Ridge. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Um, but, it, it, you know, you do get a good performance from Andrew Garfield and pre the combat scenes, there, there is a certain amount of pleasure to be had in just watching what is ultimately, you know, for all his faults, he's a good filmmaker in terms of like his ability to point a camera at a scene and you know block it out and 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 film a sequence and discuss what's what to do with actors. Like he's he's a capable director. Mm. I just don't agree with his views or the ways in which he kind of ends up pointing his films. But there's a certain amount of fun to be had in just watching some fairly talented actors like Vince Vaughn and Hugo Weaving and Andrew Garfield. Mm do a, f- a a rope by the numbers world war Two, you know training film um anyway that's hexa ridge i won't talk too much more about that one um other than that yeah last, so last night as i mentioned earlier i went to the ao arena in manchester to see oh red hot chili peppers no oh <laughs> sadly not 
to see Alan Partridge live. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Good. St- Steve Coogan's uh, most famous comic creation, one of the most iconic British characters in comedy um, of all time. Uh, I think this is the first time he's ever done a live show where he is Alan Partridge for the entire thing. He normally does. He'll do he'll do stuff like he did a tour. I think called Steve Coogan is Alan Partridge and other characters where half of it is him as Alan Partridge and the other half is him as various other characters. But this one was two hours just Alan Partridge. Mm-hmm. It's called Stratagem, and the idea is that he's touring the UK to. Um, to sell his self-help scheme uh, to people in on how to improve themselves. Mm. Um, and I have never seen Alan Partridge live before. I love Alan Partridge and always have done throughout my entire life. And for that reason, I think I had a pretty good time, mm. but certainly not for the reason of any particularly great comedy <clears> occurring <throat> on the stage. Mm. Um, yeah, it was a real... It was an like it was written by I think the Gibbons brothers who've written the recent TV stuff that Alan Partridge has done like this time with Alan Partridge etc. And I was hoping it would be I was you know I had sort of quite high hopes for it to be pretty incredible. And I think from when I got into the arena and saw the merchandise stand where the most exciting thing you could buy was a tea towel with a map of the UK on it that highlighted all the tour dates. Not even like a picture of Alan Partridge on it, just a picture of the UK showing where the tour was going to. I was like, hmm, I don't know if a lot of effort has been put into this. And then during the show itself, I was sort of, again, convinced of that. Um, there was mm. a lot of, like, there was a, there was an, int- so there's an entire sequence in the first act where he um, travels back in time to talk to himself as a schoolboy, um, mm. which was intermittently funny. But then he, he travels forward in time to like 2068 and talks to a version of himself that's on a big screen at the back. So he's he's live there interacting with a pre-recorded film of himself uh, done up to look like an old man, and it was one of the most torturously unfunny things I've ever oh. seen, sadly. But then there were bits like when he was just, you know, the opening 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, where he's just talking to the audience as Alan Partridge and joking around was pretty good. There's an opening musical number that's like a big riff on Hamilton, um, mm. But introducing him instead, uh, with him pretending to enjoy rap music because he wants his audience to be more diverse uh, and stuff like that was quite funny. But then, um, yeah, some of the other skits were a bit of a disappointment. It will probably, by the time you hear this, the tour will probably have ended, but I think it's almost definitely going to find its way, a film version of it will find its way onto some sort of streaming mm. service or DVD. And um, if you are a diehard Alan Partridge fan, you should go and watch it. If you're not, I don't think there's going to be much in it for you, which was uh, a little bit disappointing, but there we go. Um, Other than that, uh, all I've got to talk about is, let's see, um, I've been reading a comic book called Bone. Have you ever heard of Bone? No. It ran ran from the mid-90s to the mid-noughties, I think, about 10 years. It's run by a guy called Jeff Smith, and it follows the adventure of three bonies from Boneville, um, what they call they're called phone bone, phony bone, and smiley bone, uh, who are all drawn to look like just quite rounded, very simple cartoon characters, just like a big round nose and a round mm. head and no features really, uh, to look like I guess they are actually made of bone, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, and it opens with them having been turfed out of the Boneville where they live for reasons that you find out later. And the initially it all seems like kind of old Donald Duck or Mickey Mouse comic books where mm. it's all kind of quite silly jokes and, you know, the stakes are very low. And then they find themselves in this valley and over the course of the series they get involved in this huge epic uh, fantasy saga that's sort of like Lord of the Rings. So the comic ends up being these very simple, silly, childlike characters who are joking around and, you know, behaving like that the whole time being caught up in the middle of a very serious fantasy epic um that has like lord of the rings vibes and the art style for those characters is much more detailed and serious than the art style for the for the bones um which is pretty brilliant actually it's pretty cool i i read it because 
it keeps getting every so often news stories will come out that it's going to be adapted into a film or TV show of some kind. Most recently, in 2019, Netflix announced that they were going to do an animated series of it. And just recently, Netflix announced they were shutting down their animation department, including uh, by you know by that fact, cancelling the Bone series that they were going to do. So I I I decided to finally kind of uh, to kind of, uh, to read it. What's so, up? So so they they're not doing animation anymore. Netflix. Nope. What? What's happening? Nope, they're, <laughs> uh, they're struggling to come to terms with the fact that they are not able to like they're they've got loads of subscribers but at a certain point they can't grow anymore because there's only so many people in the world to have netflix accounts but because of the way capitalism works their stakeholders will insist that there must be growth every quarter etc so they're for the first time ever and i think also because of the pandemic ending around the world not ending but being viewed to have ended around the world lots of people who got netflix accounts while they were in lockdown are cancelling them so they've lost like a record number of subscribers on a short period of time and it's caused them to panic a little bit and one of the results is that they've shut down their original animation department uh that's so there will be a shame that's crazy. it is a shame because they've made some really that's good insane. animations yeah absolutely um and bone looked like it was going to be really good um but unfortunately, it it didn't happen. But it's a really it's a really fun comic book. It really really reminds me of um. It's all done in black and white, um. But I think there's a coloured version you can get, but it's not the one I've got. And it really massively reminds me of uh the old Popeye comic books that I used to read quite a lot when I was a kid, where you would have Popeye going off to fight uh, a <clears throat> sea witch, and it would all get quite fantastical. But you'd still have characters like Wimpy running around, um, saying things like "I'd gladly pay pay you Wednesday for a burger today" and stuff like <laughs> that, and um. I don't know. I really enjoyed it. So I'd, I, I've not finished it yet, but uh, if you haven't heard of or read Bone by Jeff Smith, I would recommend um, getting your hands on that. It can all be gotten... Uh, the whole series, which is about 1,300 pages long, can be found on the Comixology app uh, from Amazon for like a tenner, around a ten, around £10. So easily worth that. It's good stuff. Um, and the last thing to mention is that I watched the very first episode of the new um, prestige true crime drama The Staircase, which uh, documents the um, story of Michael Peterson and his wife, uh, Kathleen Peterson, who um, in 2001 was found dead at the bottom of a staircase in her family home, and Michael Peterson was shortly after arrested for her murder. And this is all documented amazingly in a documentary series available on Netflix called The Staircase. And um, now we have a fictional drama version of it, Produced, I think, by well, it's on it's on Now TV in the UK, so Sky in the UK, um, starring Colin Firth as uh, Michael Peterson and Tony Collette as his wife Kathleen. And um, having watched all of the documentary, I wasn't sure if I really needed to watch a you know a drama version of the same story. But having watched the first episode, I think I'm definitely going to continue with it because Colin Firth is um, always good value, as is Tony Collette. And um, from the first episode, it's it's really sort of doing a good job of demonstrating what an odious, even if he didn't kill his wife, what an odious arsehole Michael Peterson appears to be, um, at least in terms of the way Colin Firth portrays him. Um, uh, and then the, the, like they do a really good job of making the, in a way that the documentary wasn't a- ever able to, when they show the, the crime scene or the murder scene in the show, it is absolutely heart-wrenchingly awful to look at. And um, I think as you, as it, the series goes on, there'll probably be more bits and pieces that the, the documentary wasn't able to properly capture that will be um, recreated in, in the drama that will probably be, be quite good. So yeah, uh, The Staircase seems seems like it's worth a watch. Colin Firth and Tony Collette doing good work, along with Michael Stolberg, who plays the lawyer, and um, Sophie Turner's in there as one of his daughters, and there's, and there's quite a few kind of good actors that pop up in it, it seems. So it's well, good. Well, and that's, where is it? Where, where can you find it? So I'm watching it on Now TV in the UK, which is the Sky streaming service. Ah, okay. So for you, it will probably be on Sky. Uh, for people in the US, I don't know. Maybe it might be a HBO thing. No, I don't think it is HBO. I'm not too sure. It's on HBO Max, The Staircase. Did you not watch the Eurovision Song Contest last night? No, definitely no, no, I did not. <laughs> I told you I was at Alan Partridge. I couldn't watch it. Ah, yeah, sorry, I forgot. Otherwise, obviously, I'd have been um, 
not watching it. Finding any reasons <laughs> to not watch it. What have you done? Um. Uh. So. Uh. Uh. As I said before, this week I have been preparing for Andrew Garfield, so I've been obsessing over him. Um. Mm-hmm. So, but I would like to talk about a film that I know is probably not on your top five and is definitely not on my top five um, uh, that I watched this week um, with Andrew Garfield, of course, um, called Mainstream. Mainstream. I was going to yes. try and watch Mainstream, but yeah. it's not available on anything in the UK. Yeah, it was really hard to find here as well. I had to, uh, I, I, I found it on Amazon Prime and I had to buy it for like eight euro. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> was it worth my eight euro? I don't know. Uh, so that that started my week of Andrew Garfield. So that I that was the first film that I decided the first new film that I decided to watch this week. It's a film uh, directed by Gia Coppola which I never heard of her, but apparently the film she did before was amazing, which I'm going to check out. Um, she's but, uh, one of the she, Coppola's, right? She's yeah, she is. She's uh, Francis Ford Coppola's granddaughter. And uh, it's it's a film with big names. Uh, so there's Andrew Garfield, mm-hmm. uh, Maya Hawke, which is, she's we know who. And yep. I, I never seen any anything with her. And she looks exactly like this split between her mother and her father which are Ethan mm-hmm. Hawke and uh, Huma Thurman she's, she's in amazing she's in the looking third, yeah she is she's in the third season of Stranger Things and she is so amazing in that show she's very very good and a great actor she's really really good and then there's Nat Wolf mm. which is Alex's wolf Alex Wolf's um, brother Oh, Alex Wolf off of being in Hereditary. And yeah, things. yeah. Because oh, I was looking at this guy and I was like, why does he look familiar? And here's <laughs> his brother. Uh, there's Johnny Knoxville, uh, okay. Jason Schwartzman. Okay, well, he's so, part of the Coppola. He's part of the Coppola, so you know, you, you, you go. And so it's this film about, uh, what is it about? I don't know. It's set in Hollywood and um, this More like girl. Like Hollywood. Holy weird, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this um girl um who is kind of she dropped out of school and she wants to become a content creator on YouTube. Um she um she's not having very much success because she she hasn't she she doesn't really know what to do. She meets uh, mm-hmm. this guy uh, called Link, which is played by Andrew Garfield, who Yes. Yeah, she's 23 and he's 38 at this point. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, no, 36, I think. So, but it's amazing how Andrew Garfield can play a young guy. He's, yeah. And, um, and he's kind of a guy that is kind of off the grid. He hasn't got a phone. He hasn't got social media. And he doesn't really understand uh, th- this. But together uh, with the help of... Um, uh, Jake, played by Nat Wolf, they create uh, this kind of content that then, unfortunately, then it escalates to be not the greatest content, but uh, it gets a lot of attention. Um, weirdly, in this film, at one point, there are also like content creators, actual content creators from YouTube. Like, I don't know if you ever heard of uh, Patrick Starr, um there's this guy jake paul who is look you remember in japan Uh, we're living in japan wait but they (laughs) kind of like they put them in a scene which i don't understand and johnny knoxville is interviewing them it's kind of so this is the film it's trying to be a, a critique against content creators and social media and that kind of easy money but it's really weirdly made. It makes very little sense. And and I, I that's why I asked you to watch it, because I don't know what to make of it. The thing is, this film, what I've, I've found out, what I've realised with Andrew Garfield this week, it can be in the worst films and still be amazing in it. Mm-hmm. He gives 110%. So in this film, he's really good in it. 
He's mm-hmm. great. I enjoyed mm-hmm. his performance. I enjoyed Maya Hawke's performance. I enjoyed um, uh, Nat Wolf's performance. Uh, Johnny Knoxville. I did not like Jason Schwartzman because he was just being awkward and chaotic. Uh, <laughs> but it's such a weird film that was trying to be artistic, critiquing Hollywood, and it made no sense. And but I loved Andrew Garfield in it. That to mm-hmm. this week was such a hard list to make because he is great in anything he does. Yeah, that's true. Like Hacksaw Hacks Ridge is a great example of that as well. Yeah, and um, and then I watched uh, uh, loads of other films, which we're going to discuss probably after. But I think some of them might be on your top five. Okay. So I'm not okay. going to discuss any more, but I know that this one uh, probably wasn't. Um, and then I went to the cinema. I forgot about that. And I watched oh. the new Doctor Strange and the uh, Multiverse of Madness. Oh, you watched Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, did you? Yes. How did you find yes. that experience? It's just two hours of fun and mm-hmm. excitement and is a bit scary uh, there are lots of cameos of people that you're like oh wow uh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's exciting and mm-hmm. i i i enjoyed i enjoyed it i thought it was it was fun there was nothing there was i don't understand why people didn't enjoy it i i thought it was just like good good fun and you just watch it. Some things make sense. Some th- things don't make sense. Maybe if you haven't watched Wonder Vision, which weirdly, I found out that a lot of people didn't enjoy that. But I, I don't know. I just I loved liked it. that a lot. Yeah. What did you think then of one without spoiling too much of Wonder's story in the movie? Oh, I quite enjoyed that. I thought that her her going away. After at the end of Wonder Vision and going to this mm. place, mm. and I think it was going to be a little bit. I think I liked the fact that her she turned the way she turned mm. because of such a reason, and I liked it. I think that she is the heart of the film, and that it's more her journey is the most important thing in the movie beyond Doctor Strange himself. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, what do you I, think I, I when, agree. What do you think of the fact that some of the negative reactions to the movie have accused her storyline of being sexist in some way? Why sexist? I suppose because of a reading that um, a woman, of course, a woman would care that much about being a mum, and that's the only thing that you, that's the only motivation you oh. could give to a female character. <laughs> BS, absolute BS. She wanted a life with vision. She created that life, uh, in uh, in uh, in Wonder Vision, and she created a life that she wanted, and then it got ripped away from her, and the only thing that she could hang on was those children because Vision is not around anymore, mm-hmm. and she knows that those children are the last part of vision that she can have. I think it's sexist, sexist thinking that women cannot... Women can... If, if a woman wants a child, she wants a child. She doesn't want a child, she doesn't want a child. If she, if the children are the most important things to her, then that's that's her business. That, that's it's the been, thing. Like, the, the groundwork's been laid throughout previous films and TV shows and stuff to make it all... Yeah. That you, and, and she's been corrupted by the dark hold, etc. And I, I feel I feel like with Wonder Vision we found find out what she wants and she wants vision and a family with vision and that's mm-hmm. her goal. And and she's so obsessed by it, and then you know the dark hold gets hold of her that mm-hmm. I think was totally believable and and totally saddening. I felt really sorry for her mm-hmm. because she she is so determined and so obsessed by this that she 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 goes on a rampage, which is bloody scary. What did you think of America Chavez? I liked her actually. I'm yeah, a... I think she's good. I, I thought it was. I it. thought it was fun. Also, I was in the cinema. It was just in four people. There was nobody else at the cinema. Oh wow! Yeah, it was amazing. It was I... a great experience. I saw it a second time in the cinema this week on IMAX yeah. in the UK, and yeah. um, I think 
it might be my favourite Marvel film. Mm. I don't think it's... I, it's not everyone's favourite Marvel movie, but I think I it does... Feel, I feel that you, you... I think what I like about it, and I think it's just... It just... It, there was no... Uh, what's the word? There were no complications about it, wasn't it? It's just a very entertaining film. Yeah. And there's, there's a few of the bad reviews are to, to call it like confusing or a messy. There's nothing confusing about it. And no. I think it's really well done because it could have been really confusing. It could have yeah, been definitely. really confusing. And I liked it because the, the witchcraft bit, there's some really scary moments. Like, yeah. Scary. That's, like, what I, that's what I like about yeah, it. Yeah. And I, th- I feel that it has gone from, they're not superheroes. They're actually different from superheroes they mm-hmm. are they are magic and i liked that that they they dif- differ- differentiate from agreed and i i think i think it was great and and it was a two it was just entertaining what's wrong with entertaining what's wrong with just like go and i think that's what i do exactly. with marvel films now i sit down and i enjoy the spectacle and I think that's why I love them because I I don't have to think very much. Mm-hmm. There are some confusion. I get sad because you know Scarlet Witch made me really sad. I felt especially when, uh, she she figures out that what what she wants cannot ever happen yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, somebody. Yeah. I was really I, I felt really heartbroken for her because that's all mm-hmm. she wants. She wants vision and she wants kids. <laughs> she can't have either, <laughs> which is horrible. Also, I think on my second watch of it, my um, MVP in the movie is Wong. <sighs> I do He's love so Wong. good. Yeah. He does a lot of very good just screaming and yelling. Um, yeah. In particular, yeah. there's the scene early on where Kamataj is being attacked um, mm. and um, they're trying to get inside their minds and he just goes, sorcerer, strengthen your minds! And he just screams <laughs> at it. He's got such a great kind of unhinged yeah. yell. Um, yeah. yeah, he's good. Mm. He's good. I'm glad you liked yeah. it. Uh, oh, yeah. I I, I, just, I think I think I'm just going to enjoy them from now on. I think they had their little dip and I think they can just get, as long as they, they're entertaining and they like kind of follow a certain story and if you watched everything, I think, I think you can also enjoy what hmm. you know from pre previous things. Yeah, well Amazing. we've got we've got Miss Marvel coming up in June and then Thor, yeah. Love and Thunder coming up in July. So it's there's gonna be much more Marvel to discuss as we uh, Yeah. Exciting. As we go through the year. Very exciting. Yeah. I can't wait. So yeah. any more culture catch up? Uh no, not for this week. Well we're gonna discuss uh, what I've watched uh, in detail later for uh, Andrew Garfield. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, shall we go to my trip? this week yeah i've got a couple of um so because we this this uh this episode should be called andrew garfield takeover uh i'm slightly obsessed um because i just i just didn't think he was so good um i didn't think he was good i just didn't give him the time of day but i'm gonna show you i'm gonna show you andrew garfield the fur in the first thing i've ever seen him in uh, okay. which is this TV series, Channel 4 TV series uh, that um, aired uh, in 2005. Mm. Um, you don't have to watch the entire video, but I'll just, I'll show you just him. The TV series I'm talking about is called 
Sugar Rush. Have I remember. Heard of it? Sh- yeah, I remember Sugar Rush. Yeah, do you yeah, remember yeah. Andrew Garfield in it? No. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> But I mean, I didn't, I didn't watch much of Sugar Rush. No, me neither. But like, I think, I think from the beginning, he's kind of in the first episodes or something. But right. um, I sent you the video. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Hi. Look at oh, him. Look at him. He's so little. David. And new stalker. Is this a bad time? <laughs> he's so little but he's like 2005 so he's like 23 years old or something yeah that's mad I know cool cool poster thanks yeah Jay <laughs> I mean cool cool revolutionary so what was Sugar Rush it was the story of a, a two girls falling in yeah. love, like well, exploring. she she finds out that she uh does she is um probably is attracted to oh, yeah. girls rather than boys, and uh, she meets this girl, I think her name is Sugar or something, and they just have this really weird relationship, and uh, but this is her neighbor, and um, <laughs> he likes her, but she likes Sugar, right. It's a very like um I feel like especially I don't know maybe if it's not just in the UK but like it's a very common teenage TV show or film thing to have like a very yeah a very kind of button down nervous teenager and then like yeah. a very cool person comes into their life and changes their perspective yeah look at him he's a tiny little baby cool pause it there then yeah. And then I'm going to show you him on um, another on uh, one of his favorite TV shows, which is also one of my favorite TV shows. Let's um, I just think he's just a genuinely nice, lovely dude. Yeah. He's and a great good. actor. Did you Did watch I? Sugar Rush at the time? I watched a few episodes. But it was I think I was a little bit too old. I think I was about 20 years old then. Okay, are we watching this then? So this is Andrew Garfield on Drag Race UK. Yeah. Yeah, he loves that show. And I love him as a judge. Interesting. Okay, well, this is new for me. Uh, Should we start watching it? Yeah. Okay, three, two, one, go. Hello, Cheryl. Hi, babe. My mother's from Essex. Oh, then she's a true girl to my heart. <laughs> the thing, that first look is exactly what she would wear when she would pick me up from school when I was four or six years old. No, I'm just kidding. I love the detail. <laughs> He's so cute paper. in it. The fully formed character in that yeah. first look just wasn't present for the second one. Creativity here is totally outside the box, and it's. But it's amazing. Like he's such a, like a high caliber actor, and he just goes on RuPaul Drag Race UK, which is not even that big, and just there's a judge. Well done, him. Hmm? Good for him. But yeah, just wanted to show you a couple of clips of like him not being, maybe that you hadn't seen before. I definitely haven't seen this clip. I, I just got to lay back and just walk lay back. He seems very passionate and enthusiastic about it. He seems genuinely happy to be there, doesn't he? Yeah, he loves the show. Interesting. I had no idea he had appeared on Drag Race UK. Yeah. Or that he was in Sugar Rush, actually. I know, it's um, amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it is amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. What a guy. What an what incredible What a guy. Man. What a guy. Um. Okay. So, I don't really have a MyTube, so we'll, we'll leave it there with MyTube this week. It was yeah. your turn to provide things, and you provided some wonderful little clips from history. Um, let's go to homework. Sit down at the back and be quiet and get out your book, because it's time to discuss your homework now. <laughs> well, I haven't done my homework. What was Sorry. your 
my homework my homework was to watch um episode uh, Star Wars episode 9 uh the rise of Skywalker yes and i i i haven't watched it because i watched Andrew Garfield all week i'm yes. sorry and i gave you the homework one week ago yeah two weeks yeah. ago <laughs> okay um that's now fine now i know you... how my how my my student feels uh, my students feel you you still have to watch it though no we'll watch it for next okay, time good. i promise i promise um, i just i just didn't realize i was gonna love watching andrew garfield so much i thought i was gonna watch a couple of films and go yeah i know what i would like but <laughs> fair enough I... my homework though was for some reason even though it wasn't a star wars movie to watch the net french netflix movie bad seeds well, because you had to decide what to watch. Yes. Because um, you watched all the the Star Wars films, so ab- you could have absolutely. watched Parallel Mothers. No. Yeah, Parallel Mothers, which I did want to watch but couldn't get easily. Yeah, so, so I told you I... to watch Parallel Mothers, and but instead you decided to watch Bad Seeds. Oh, because I couldn't watch Parallel Mothers, so I had to watch Bad Seeds. Yeah. Um, and I we have to talk about it today because if we wait any longer, I'll probably forget what happens in it. There you go. Yeah. Um, uh, Bad Seeds, you talked about it the other week, so we won't spend too long on it, but it is a 2018 French comedy drama film, uh, written and directed by Kayron, who plays the lead role. It is about two small time con artists, an elderly lady played by Catherine Deneuve, and, um, uh, a, a younger man, her adopted son, played by uh, Kiron, who are small-time crooks and run a scam, stealing shopping from old men, until one day the old man happens to know Catherine New's character, and um, in order to get out of having charges pressed, Kiron agrees to be the teacher carer for a group mm. of troubled teens who um this man played by Andre de Solier, I think his name is. Um mm. yeah, Victor has just started up a um like a sort of summer school thing for troubled teens and he has to be the mentor there. And um from there the movie takes sort of the path you'd expect of like teacher yeah. encounters group of troubled teens movies. Uh, of which it's like an entire genre unto itself. Hmm. Um, and I thought it was f- fine. Yeah, it's fine. I thought the comedy was bad. I hated the jokes. Mm. Um, and I hated the dance sequence that didn't need to be in the movie at all. There's a scene where she makes him dress up as an old man and, and win a dance contest with him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it just didn't add. There was no reason for it to be in the movie, but the emotional stuff worked for me in Mm. terms of like the child actors playing the teenagers were pretty good and seemed very natural. And their stories, Mm. those of them that had stories, you know, were quite heartfelt and fairly Mm. simple, but still quite touching. And seeing them, seeing their affection grow for um, Whale, uh, the lead character played by Kieran, was 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 nice to see. And it was it ended up being you know a sweet. A nice, yeah. sweet little drama, um, but just the 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 jokes and and gags in it didn't land for me at all. I didn't think it was funny. But yeah, no, I think yeah. I think you're right. I think I think there was this kind of this kind of French wanting to like make like kind of slapstick comedy kind of thing. To yeah, add, that didn't add anything to the film. But I think he, I think because he's a comedian. I think is expected of him to add these things, and I think even without them in the film, it would be a good watch. I think, yeah, like, in, yeah, like, definitely. um, so yeah, I, th- I think you're right with them because you know, yeah, the this dance scene was strange. <laughs> I forgot about that because I think it's just such a pointless, such a yeah, it's pointless. Yeah, you're right, but I think because it's um, that's what he does in in France. I think that's we had to add it because if not, it would be. Well, you know, a bit like uh, the grandma movie. What's it called? The nan movie. Oh, the nan movie. <laughs> you have to kind of like do the things that people expect they expect you to do. Yeah, that's very true. Um, yeah, I thought Catherine. I mean, I don't know if I've seen any other Catherine Deneuve movies. I don't know if I watched 
if I didn't know who she was, I wouldn't assume she was a legendary actress based on her mm. performance in this film. But she's not. She's mm. not. All, she's also not given a lot to do. She's perfectly no. fine. But yeah. again, she's asked to do quite a lot of jokes, and they're, they're not very really right. Mm. But you yeah, know, yeah. I really liked all of the scenes that were whale and the the, the teens. I thought those were, were really lovely, good. weren't they? Yeah, yeah really I think, lovely, I think really the, nice. Mm. Yeah. Um. The scene, I think probably the best sequence in the movie is when he takes him into a town square and, and makes him compete to see who can buy lunch with no, starting from having no money. Do you remember that scene? They all have yeah, to go yeah. off and try and like... Um, yeah. That was good. Um, yeah, so, you know, I'm, 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 I'm glad I watched it, but I think within a month I'll forget that it exists. Kind of, yeah, that kind yeah. Of film. yeah. Mm, definitely. Um, well, cool. That was homework. So, should we go to uh, our top five for the day? Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Our top five. So, this I I know I said that for uh, Bruce Willis, but this was really hard because he. He's, I think, is one of the best actors of all time. I've Who, decided. Andrew Garfield? Yeah, wow. I've decided. Well, he's still yeah. quite early in his career as well, technically. Uh, like exactly, totally but more... with what I've seen, I think he's so good. Because mm. it's like it's not even like you know you have actors. I don't. I don't even. I don't know if he's. This proves that like method acting is not necessarily the right thing you have to be a good actor yeah so yeah, yeah. i've seen a f- one of my my in my top five like i didn't particularly in- the film was okay but i think his performance in it was so good that it just he's just amazing he's mm. he, he feel I, I i find that he gets a character and he understands it and he portrays the best that he can definitely to emanate this character and I think that's what he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um and I'm obsessed. Okay. I wish I'd have not done this because I'm obsessed. <laughs> well <laughs> that's, that's fine to be obsessed. Uh, uh, shall I start with my number five? Yes please. I think uh, my number yeah. five is a movie that I watched because we were doing this. I hadn't seen it before, but mm. it had always been in the back of my mind as a film I'd quite like to watch so I think when we decided to do this episode, this was the first film that I watched. Um, and it's the 2010 mm. movie, uh, Dystopian Romantic Tragedy, uh, directed by Mark Romanek, Never Let Me Go. Yeah, of course I have it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Based on a novel by Kazuo Ishiguro, yeah. Ishiguro who is a very yeah. respected um, British author. who did British the, slash Japanese author. Yeah, who did The Remains of the Day. Yep. Yeah. Uh, a long time ago. Um, yeah. And the screenplay for the movie was by Alex Garland, who is um, a really great um, screenwriter, director. He did um, the screenplay for 28 Days Later. Oh, okay. He directed the film, um, what's it called? Annihilation with uh, Natalie mm. Portman, which is a great movie. He has got a film coming out quite shortly called Men that we have, um, I think we've done on my tube. I can't remember if we did or not. It's got Rory Kinnear and um, Jesse Buckley in it. Um, I'm really excited mm. to see that movie, um, even though the reviews have been a little bit mixed. Mm. But yeah, I love Alex Garland. So yeah, and then it stars um, a variety of people, but primarily Kerry Mulligan, Kira Knightley and Andrew Garfield, who play three people who live in this world that's slightly removed from ours, yeah. uh, where because in the 1960s, scientific breakthroughs occurred that allowed uh, all diseases to be cured and it's an mm. interesting decision of the movie and maybe the books part i don't know to not expand on what that scientific breakthrough was in the early going but then it becomes yeah, the, clear yeah eventually. in the book in the book it it, it, it come, arrives even later like oh really that's why you, yeah you go what yeah yeah so it follows yeah. these three uh, children who grow up at boarding school played by different actors including one of them uh, the young Keira Knightley character is played by Ella Purnell mm. uh, is it, is it Ella Purnell? Ella, yeah Ella Purnell who is has grown up to become um, a really good actress in her own right um, 
is in a, f- a series called Yellow Jackets that I really highly ah, recommended yeah. recently and played the young um, Angelina Jolie in the Maleficent movies. But the casting for those kids was spot on. Yeah, she yeah she definitely looks like a young Keira Knightley, and the the girl like who the, plays the young Carrie Mulligan is she looks like Carrie Mulligan. The only one they didn't really get was um Andrew Garfield because he's got a particular face, but um, yeah yeah, but the, yeah. the two girls definitely. Um, yeah. So yeah, and then you've got uh, Sally Hawkins in there. Miss Lucy uh, plays mm. a teacher at their boarding school yeah. in quite a pivotal, small but key role. Yeah. Charlotte Rampling as well in a small but key role as uh, the headmistress of the boarding school they grew yeah. up in. And then Donald Gleeson and Andrea Riseborough as to um, a couple that they encounter as they mm. grow older. So it starts with them as about 10, 11 years old, I guess, quite young. Yeah. Um, and then follows them through to their mid to late 20s. Mm-hmm. Um, and we discover as the movie goes on, I mean, slight spoilers here, because I think we have to talk about this to get through it. And it's not the kind of movie where the plot is the thing. So it, it turns out that they're they're being raised in this environment because they are intended to be organ donors yeah so the idea is that they will grow up and at a certain point in their life they will start being made to donate organs yeah. and after a certain number of donations of course they will pass mm-hmm. away um it's and when you learn that and you, you actually know what the film is about you realize that not a single I, I, I've, I don't know how true this is but it feels to me that not a single person featured on screen for the entire movie smiles it's the most happy <laughs> <laughs> it's more drained of happiness than any other film I've ever seen. It's so bleak. Um, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There are, there is a moment where, like, um, you know, um, Tommy and uh, Kathy H, Kerry Mulligan, and um, I think when they first get together after mm. like a long time. Mm. I think there's a smile there. <laughs> maybe, maybe a small one. <laughs> That's um, <laughs> you can count them on your fingers. <laughs> yeah. Um, so within this, within this world of uh, organ donors and transplants and things, um, Tommy Andrew Garfield's character and Kathy Carey Mulligan's character are clearly mm. connected on a sort of spiritual level. Yeah. But. Uh, Ruth, uh, Kieran Knightley's character, places herself in between them and it creates a sort of a love triangle and you see how this develops throughout the course of, of the film and various characters becoming to terms with the way they've behaved as children and it all gets quite upsetting and emotional and it's hard to view mm-hmm. any one of the three of them as a bad person. They all make poor choices. But yeah, um, they, they all kind of come to realise, those of them that make the worst choices come to realise, you know, that they wish they'd made different choices. And what's so d- sort of r- heart-wrenching about the movie is that these revelations come quite late because we are yeah. told early on and it remains the case that these characters are not, you know, due a long, happy life. And I yeah. saw I saw one or two reviews of this movie when I was looking it up of people being like, why didn't they just run away? And I guess yeah. what I like about the film is that that is answered every time they leave a house or go into a house, you see them scan a thing they have around their wrist on the door. But what's so, so good about the movie is that it never explains that they're being tracked in that way and that that they would be hunted down and killed if they ran away. It Mm. just, you intuit that from from seeing them do this little scanning thing. Like the movie doesn't tell you things it, it it trusts you to understand the world it's created mm. and it doesn't it doesn't beat you over the head with like the details of it and that leaves more room for the emotional story of the these three characters to kind of grow it's a really brilliant movie i loved mm-hmm. it and um andrew garfield has quite a small role it it very much focuses on carrie mulligan's uh kathy as she decides oh. to become a carer for mm. these people yeah. um and you know the first forty minutes or so, they're all young children, so it's not even mm-hmm. the it's not Andrew Garfield, it's other actors. Yeah. But Andrew Garfield, when he does come into play, is really good. And in one particular scene where he gets out of a car and is upset, uh, it <gasps> does 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 that, that scene break, is break down scene really well. Yeah. yeah. So no, I really liked yeah. it. And um, yeah, it. what did you think? Of it? What, it, what's your? Uh, this is, so I watched it again uh, just to to hurt myself uh the first time i watched it it broke me this time i knew it was and i've read the book as well and this time i was like i'm ready for it and i wasn't ready for it <laughs> you know when you just watch something you're like oh just 
just it's a this time will be different and it won't um and um and the thing about running away what i love about kazuo ishiguro i don't think in the book he even tells you that there are these uh chips i don't remember but i don't think there are these um these bracelets because i think what he does is just the fact he writes about us not being able to move away from a situation because we are meant to be in that place and mm. we are not strong enough or have the courage because there are these invisible walls that will allow us to change our situation because in theory they mm. could have just ripped chopped their hand off and go away. I don't know something. Go take this bracelet yeah. off. But it's just us being scared of um, not knowing what this invisible was on the other side of this invisible wall. So that's why it's such a beautiful film because they're trapped, but they're not trapped. And they did it so well. And Kerry Mulligan is incredible in this film. But Andrew Garfield, in in the moments that we have, he changes so much from before he gives the donations. Dafty gives the donations, and it's just it's just is is amazing. I love the film. I love the book. Um, uh, and Andrew Garfield is amazing in this film. Yeah, but I uh, just I don't think I can watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised you watched it. Twice. I just wanted to watch it again. It's like, oh, I wonder, I wonder if I and I did. I just, I just, it just broke me again. And I saw your review on Letterboxd. <laughs> perfect review can i read it <laughs> yeah sure okay george's review on this film i'm empty drained done <laughs> throw me in a ditch and tell me <laughs> and tell my friends i love them <laughs> so accurate. it's so perfect <laughs> it's uh it's an upsetting film yeah it really is it really mm. really as is the case with a few of his movies yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. He doesn't shy away from emotionally no. draining, sad no. films. Um, okay, what's your number five? My number five, um, uh, my number five is not a film that I thought was great, but I think Andrew Garfield is incredible in this film, and mm. I think it shows the power of this actor. And uh, my number five is a, a 2017 film directed. And by Andy Serkis, his directorial uh, debut. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Called Breathe. And it's great cast: Andrew Garfield uh, as Robin Cavendish, Claire Foy as uh, his wife, Tom Hollander playing two people, uh, mm. twins, uh, Claire Foy's brothers, Hugh Bonneville, which I love. I love him in in in, in classic like. Uh, English actor um, yeah. uh, Dean Charles Chapman which we saw in 1917 mm. and uh, he and is about uh, Robert Cavendish is, is a true story um, mm. about uh, Robin Cavendish uh, played by Andrew Garfield uh, who falls ill from polio uh, when he's 28 um after meeting his uh, wife Diana played by um Claire Foy and uh polio um paralyzes him from the neck down which is normal and yeah. um you can't breathe without um help and um he's only given 3 months to live wow. but he lived until the age of 64 wow. and it's just a story of um He's really depressed at the beginning because, you know, he's he's a very active man and he likes doing loads of things and very proud. And um, he's really depressed and he wants to die. He was like, I can't do this anymore. But his wife kind of convinces him and she takes him out of the of uh, the air hospital. And um, they uh, his friend, Robin's friend, um creates this chair that uh makes you go outside and be able to breathe 
So you right. can, even if you've got polio, you can go um, outside and uh, you can breathe. And uh, he was um, a big advocate for, um, you know, people with disabilities and stuff. And mm. uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a film like, you know, about a love story and he's sick and it's, it's a great film to see. But um, most of the film, Andrew Garfield is paralyzed. He can mm. only use his face. And the emotion that he gave, and the you knew exactly how he felt. He did the the voice. He, he just with his head, his facial expressions. He delivered an incredible performance, and I was hooked watching him. I it was amazing, and he's just great. And I, I really liked him in this film. Um, and he he ages and. As an actor, he can age really well. <laughs> I don't know. He can look really young or he can age him incredibly well. Mm-hmm. And and I I really enjoyed his performance in this. I thought he was great. Mm. I don't know if you've seen the film. No. I I saw I remember seeing adverts for it in the cinema when it was coming out in the cinema mm. a couple of years ago and thinking it didn't look like the kind of film I would like, so I didn't watch it. Yeah, I, 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 I would, I, if, if you can watch some scenes from it, if you just because to see how like from when he's in hospital and he's just like depressed and you can see it that he, he because he can't even speak, but just from his facial expression, you can see the anguish that he has that he can't move ever again to then mm. when his wife takes him out of hospital, it just. He's amazing, and I really enjoyed his performance. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. No. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, like it's not. I don't think, and that's the thing. I enjoyed watching the film because he's in it. I, you know, it's a great story, of course, but I think what made it amazing was uh, his performance. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Interesting. So that's brave. Breathe. Um, so my number, my number four then. Yeah. Uh, my number four is the 2014 movie directed by Mark Webb, uh, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Ooh. Yeah. Um, of the three big cinematic Spider-Mens that we've had in recent years of Tobey Maguire, mm-hmm. Tom Holland and Andrew Garfield, I think I'm mm. firmly decided that my favourite performance as Peter Parker and Spider Man is Andrew Garfield out of those three, even though Tom Holland and Tobey Maguire were both in better films. Do you see what I mean? I watched I in this week I watched uh, the Amazing Spider Man, just the one, just the first one. Yeah. Okay. And um, after watching that, I firmly agree with you. He yeah. is the best Spider Man. Yeah, he, he is. I think he is, uh, and yeah. I think he, I think he does the best. Stuff as Spider Man and Peter Parker in the second one, where uh, which oh, okay. is like not an amazing movie. You've got um, yeah, Ma- uh, Andrew Garfield's in there as Peter Parker. You've also got Jamie Foxx in there playing Electro, uh, the big naked blue Electro in this one, along <laughs> with um, Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy. Um, and the chemistry between Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone is continues to be insane. Yeah. Um. Again, better than the movies that they were given to be in. And uh, Dane DeHaan plays Harry Osborn. Uh, Paul Giamatti's in there as the rhino. Not very good. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it's kind of, as a movie, it's a big mess. It got absolutely slated when it came out. I mean, it's filled, like, filled to the brim with Sony's attempts to create a connected Spider-Man world mm. that they could have as their own cinematic universe where, the, you know, you've got all these different little bits and pieces that are meant to be setting stuff up for future movies, but it all became so bloated with that stuff that the actual film itself got lost in the mix and isn't isn't very good, sadly. Um, mm. But Andrew Garfield continues to be... I think his Peter Parker is tricky because he just... In a similar way to Tobey Maguire, he, he, as young as Peter, Andrew Garfield can play, he's definitely playing way younger than his actual age in these movies. Mm. But he sort of works as Peter Parker, but it's where he it's his performance as Spider Man that really shines. Like mm. I grew up I grew up loving the animated Spider Man cartoon in the nineties and no one has come as close to that kind of funny, quippy 
exciting Spider-Man as Andrew Garfield does in these movies. He's so good. And there's a couple of there's a great there's a great bit in this movie where he's as Peter Parker, he's trying to kind of sneak into Oscorp um, mm. to find out something, and he does a whole little bit of like uh, physical comedy slapstick stuff with a coffee mm. cup going along this corridor, and it's really really great and well done. And he doesn't have a costume on in that bit, so you know it's just Andrew Garfield doing this bit of physical comedy, which is really fun. He has some big emotional beats to hit in this movie. There's some really tragic stuff that happens towards the end of the film that he mm. acts really well, and yeah, I think you know the it's past the spoiler warning now for 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 this one like the fact like <laughs> his arrival in spider-man no way home last year was so kind of hyped up and 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 rumored and people were so desperate to see it because he is great at this character you can tell he really mm. loves this character and loves making these films and um it's you know they were so lucky to get someone as good as him Mm-hmm. in these movies and the fact that the movies themselves aren't very good is is a pity but it it still is a joy to see Andrew Garfield mm. as Peter Parker and um there's a lot of silly fun to be had with the amazing Spider-Man 2 but it is a, it is a very silly movie so yeah, <laughs> yeah that's my that's my number 4 the amazing Spider-Man 2 the rise of electro interesting mm. i like it thank you what is your number 3 no my what is number your number three. 4 my number four. My number four is a 2012 American superhero film, yeah. The Amazing Spider-Man. Okay, so you watched this for the first time this week. Yeah. And what did you think? I I never watched them because uh, after Tobey Maguire, I was like, why, why do we need another Spider-Man? And I love Tom Holland's performances. Yeah. And I, you know, I was like, oh, Tom Holland is, you know, I like him. Uh, and then I watched this one, and I think he is the best Spider Man. Um, the film is silly, yes. You know, there's there's a lizard. Um, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Kurt Connors. Uh, Riss Ifans becomes a lizard, and he has to grow his arm and whatever. And but and and the actors are just too old to be in high school. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's okay. But I feel like. It's really, the Spider-Man is kind of tragic and I feel Andrew Garfield portrays this tragedy of like losing people already from the first Spider-Man, you know, his mm-hmm. uncle and um, his parents. And he's an angry Spider-Man. He's, he's, a, he's um, a human Spider-Man. I like his human, he's, he's just, he's a teenager and he's, not very nice to his um uncle aunt and uncle he argues with them he um he's i just enjoyed his performance and it was believable and um and he does it all by himself which is amazing because before the marvel universe you you didn't have uh, the Avengers helping you didn't have well you didn't have Tony Stark helping you with your costume you could do it by yourself with your intelligence mm. and I think I really like that and even if the story was silly it reminded me more of a comic book mm. you know the kind of comic book feel than maybe the Tom Holland's or the Tommy B- Toby Maguire's one Toby Maguire mm. ones and I I enjoyed it I thought it was fun I don't think it was as bad fine maybe i'm obsessed with andrew garfield but i think i think it was fun i really enjoyed watching it and i enjoyed watching a spider-man that is just like a teenager and angry and annoyed and and listens to coldplay yeah and listens to coldplay and the chemistry between emma stone and andrew garfield is like oh what (laughs) yeah yeah it's amazing it's so good and i loved it i didn't think it was gonna i was i just put it on because i could i have to watch at least one spider-man i promised george if i had time to watch the second one i would have i'm gonna watch it but yeah, yeah you should watch the second one's even more fun i think yeah and i you know i don't i i think i think he stepped in a in a, in a very difficult role after toby Maguire. yeah and oh yeah definitely and uh, but I think he did an incredible job. Yeah, and it was difficult as well being Spider Man. You know, that movie came out after the MCU had established itself, and I think people were a bit like, "Why can't he just be part of the Marvel world? Like, why does yeah. why do he still have yeah. to be a separate Spider Man? Like, every yeah. the odds were stacked against him, really." Yeah. Um. 
But the, the lizard just wants to make everyone into a big lizard boy. Why? Why? Yes. I don't understand why he wanted to make everybody silly. to a lizard. <laughs> that made no sense. Oh, that lizards. made really no sense. No, yeah, it was but... pretty. It was pretty stupid. But yeah, um, it's a. It is yeah. a fun. And movie. also, why did he become a lizard? Like that wasn't an antidote to become a lizard. That was an antidote to like make your limbs grow again. Yeah. Not an antidote, but like a, 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 I didn't understand. But it, I don't think you had to understand. It's so out of the. You just watch it and make it make you be entertained. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. I agree completely. A good pick. Okay. Are you ready for my number three? Yeah. I don't know if you're going to have seen this one or not, because I had to order this on DVD Ooh. from a second-hand website in the UK. Uh, mm-hmm. It's the earliest film, I think, that is likely to be on either of our lists. It is from 2007. Oh. It is a British drama film that, in fact, in the UK aired as a TV movie on, I think, ITV, mm-hmm. but was released uh, theatrically in America, called Boy A. I have not seen that. Have you heard of it? Do you know anything about it? No, I know okay. nothing about it. So Boy A... Like, I, I, I know I was there in the list, but I have <laughs> enough time. That's, that's fine. Uh, Boy A is a film... Um, it's directed by John Crowley, screenplay by Marco Rowe. It's based on a novel uh, by Jonathan Trigel. And it is a story that is not based on, but very clearly, uh, very heavily inspired by the Jamie Bulger case, which anyone in the UK knows exactly what that is. Do you know? Do you know Jamie Bulger? Are those the kids that abducted another kid? Yeah, Jamie Bulger was the young boy who was abducted from a shopping centre in the nineties by two. Ah, uh, he was adu- boys. abducted. Yeah, yeah, by two young the, boys. Yeah, John yeah. Venables and somebody else, and um, yeah. was was murdered and and. It was a, a really horrific, horrible crime um, to uh, to which the, the British tabloids went into an absolute frenzy. Um, yeah. Over it, and it is you know it's an, it's one of the most famous sort of crimes in recent UK history, certainly. So this movie isn't directly based on that, but mm. um, Andrew Garfield plays a character who were, were grew up as Eric Wilson, but in the present day where the film is set is is known as Jack. Um, and he is a a lad who, when he was in school, was involved in the murder of another young schoolgirl. Um, it's a girl in this film, and has he when you when we meet in the mo- in the movie, he's just been released after serving thirteen fourteen years in juvenile prison, mm. um, and is being placed back into society under a new name, uh, an anonymous identity uh, in Manchester. In fact, the film was this film was sort of filmed in and around Manchester. And um, we follow er, uh, Jack as he reintegrates himself into society, mm. forms friendships, finds love, is supported by his caseworker, played by Peter Mullen, who is absolutely phenomenal in the film. Um, and um, I think you know from the outset that the film, that, that it's going to have to end in, in tragedy, effectively. Like, there's not... Mm. like you sort of spend the film waiting for people to find out the truth because, you you know, you kind of know that that's going to be kind of part of the movie. But it holds back on that for a very, very long time and really does sort of spend a long time showing you um, his efforts to kind of reintegrate into society. And it, the entire film really closely follows Andrew Garfield's character, Jack, as he, as he goes on this journey and, you know, goes out drinking for the first time, um, you know, goes out with a girl for the first time mm. and really struggles with... And he plays it so well, like struggling with the having these nice experiences, and mm. you can see the struggle that he has with the guilt of the fact that the person that he killed isn't able to have these experiences. Mm. And the other boy involved in the murder um, has has passed away in prison, so he's the only sort of survivor of that event. And he, you know, he obviously carries a huge amount of guilt around with him about that. And it's a really small, heartfelt, beautifully made little film. Um, about a really really awful event and it, it and it really sort of is almost quite brave considering how how much people are going to just view this as being a cipher for the for the Jamie Bulger killers mm. um a brave look at attempting to look at somebody like that with empathy and humanity and 
you know, consider if you did do something like that when you were a child that the entire world would condemn you for? Like, how do you move on from that? And how do you kind of reintegrate society? And should you be allowed to? And mm. all of these questions. And it's yeah. not, it doesn't necessarily provide any easy answers, but it, it, it's, it asks the questions. And um, I watched it this morning, actually, and I really, really, really liked it. Mm. Um, it was similar to Never Let Me Go, like brutally sad and upsetting um mm. it also you know it, it's it, oh i forgot to mention this with bad seeds but um and apparently this was done intentionally i hated in bad seeds the abrupt way it would just suddenly switch to a flashback without mm. any clear indication yeah um but in this movie this movie as well will um flashback to um the two boys as children and you see the home life that andrew garfield's character had uh, and how kind of horrendous that was and how he found the only companionship he had in his life was this other young boy who you can tell is, is, is extremely damaged. And, you know, the movie kind of portrays him as being the one who really instigates all of the unpleasant mm. events that occur. Um, and yeah. Oh, and there's one, obviously, uh, on IMDb, there's like a little trivia thing about this. And I knew there would be. There's one scene where the two young boys um, are running along pretending to be Spider-Man and, zip and shoot webs and stuff. And I was like... Uh, because the Andrew Garfield would be Spider Man, wouldn't he? So yeah, there's another yeah, there's another film where his Spider Man uh gets um, I think that film is gonna be in your top five where there's a little Spider Man uh cameo. Oh, I don't. I'm quite not sure. Interesting. Mm. Um, yeah. cool. So, so yeah, that was um, that's Boy A. Brilliant, and he's he is astonishingly good he won best actor at the british academy television awards for, Aww, it, BAFTA. for it yeah so he won a bafta um and and well deserved and and yeah he was quite young 2007 it was you know one of his earliest roles and um yeah did a great job so yeah that's uh that's boy a sounds good yeah yeah it was good very good what's your number three my number three is a 2010 film, The Social Network. Oh, really? The Social Network. Interesting. Yes, yes. Um, I really he plays in this. Well, this film is the story about um Facebook and uh, how Mark Zuckerberg rose uh to well how Facebook r rose and how you know that this is certain decisions are. Zuckerberg did kind of let other people out of the way and one of the people was um Eduardo Saverin played by um Andrew Garfield um I'm not going to go into it we all know what Facebook is about but um it, I think I think he's great in this in this performance because I think he goes from like being extremely good friends with uh Zuckerberg to then you know, suing him and the decisions that he made as an actor in in this, and I I re I really I I don't know I I really liked him in this film, and I think is a is a great film, uh, and uh, I think is is just a great performance from uh, Andrew Garfield. I know it's a little bit basic, <clears throat> but I really enjoyed his performance here. Mm. Mm. Nice. I haven't watched The Social Network in a long time. Yeah, and there's a scene that I I I read where he's like, um, uh, he said that he was really good friends with uh, Mark Zuckerberg. So the 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 scene where he goes into uh Facebook when he finds out that <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg basically, you know, gave him like two percent of the company or something, oh, yeah. and he goes, "You better lawyer up," but he whispers it. It's like he was just he didn't want to shout it because he wanted to be like really angry and f make him feel the rage rather mm. than and just like little I think I think as an actor he chooses like these kind of moments to instead of like going extra to like go less and mm. make him more powerful. Nice, good, yeah, yeah. The last time I watched the Social Network was before I really knew Andrew Garfield as anyone other than being in the Social Network. But yeah, mm. um. I do like that movie. It's a you know it's a David Fincher film, so it's extremely well made. Um, mm. Yeah, good good pick. That is your number three. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my number two is a movie that we've talked about um, quite a lot recently, so we don't need to spend ages and ages on it. But it is the twenty twenty one biographical musical drama film Tick Tick Boom. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, directed by Lin Manuel Miranda, um, based on the story of Jonathan Larson, the creator of Rent, uh, played in this movie by Andrew Garfield, and it follows him as he prepares to um, perform for the first time his musical play, um, which is called. It's got some kind of mad silly name that I don't remember. Uh, Disturbia. Dis- S- no. Superbia. Superbia. <laughs> Superbia. Um, yeah. and he, you know, it's he. It's based on a monologue, rock, a rock monologue that Jonathan Larson uh, wrote in real life and performed in real life. So mm. he breaks out into song uh, throughout the movie. Um, and the songs are great because Jonathan Larson wrote them and Manuel Miranda directed the hell out of them. And the um, the performance by Andrew Garfield is absolutely incredible because it's not quite like anything else he's ever done before. And you completely forget that you're watching Andrew Garfield and yeah. you're just watching um, Jonathan Larson. And it's um, a, a really brilliant film. And I think that he is um, just incredible in it. I think his performance yeah. is stunning. And if you haven't seen it, you should watch it. Yeah, love the film too. I I didn't think I was going to love like that film so much. And uh, and he's, he's, he's great in it. He's really great in it. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. What's your number two? My number two is your number five, Never Let Me Go. <sighs> Never Let Me Go. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Anything else to say on it? No. Watch it. If you wanna if you wanna cry, if you wanna feel empty inside, watch it. <laughs> if you're if you're unsure about uh, wanting to like change your life, watch it. It will make you change your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true fair enough yeah um brilliant okay cool well then that brings me to my number one yeah uh, yeah which is can i a... guess it go on i think your number one could be uh a film that i watched yesterday uh 2019 under the silver lake yes <laughs> of course I was watching that film. I was like, "What? What is going on? What? Oh, George is gonna love this film." And yeah, that's where there's the little the little Spider Man thing. Yeah, he, he finds wakes up. <laughs> he wakes up with his hand in his pants, and then he gets a comic, and the comic gets stuck, but not because he's been doing something else with his hand, not because he's got shooting spider webs. <laughs> but it's quite funny. It is funny. <laughs> Um, so you love this film I tell me why and can film. you explain it to me because I did not understand it no I can't explain it to you it's <laughs> uh, written, produced and directed by David Robert Mitchell who previously had made It Follows um, a very kind of well regarded slasher movie and people expected him to make a follow up um, horror movie and he didn't, he made a film that can't really be given a genre it's a comedy no. it's thriller it's a psychological yeah. thriller it's a horror film it's yeah it's every kind of thing you could imagine a film could be um it follows a slacker uh played by andrew garfield who um sets out to discover the fate of his neighbor played by riley kyo who he bonds with one evening and then the next morning he wakes up in an apartment is empty and um he goes yeah. on a journey through the uh, mysterious back roads of LA uh, to try and discover what's happened to her and um, he does discover what's happened to her to be fair but along the way he encounters <laughs> well he does discover what's happened to her she's in the she's underground not to spoil anything I guess he does nothing to spoil because it's the most confusing <laughs> it's a very confusing film um Along the way, he, he discovers and stumbles upon a wide variety of conspiracies um, that he yeah. thinks are all connected together, and maybe they are. It's sort of in a vein of... It's got a lot of... It's got some DNA shared between it and The Big Lebowski in terms of it follows a slacker stoner type who mm. finds themselves wrapped up in a neo-noir... LA based neo noir mystery. Like it is very much yeah. a, a different take on the same story that you see in the Big Lebowski. Yeah. Uh, in a lot of ways. I um, guess, yeah. 
And similar to Jeff Bridges in The Big Lebowski, Andrew Garfield plays this slacker character perfectly. I love the way he plays. He just sort of drifts through the movie and events happen to him and he 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 becomes like there's one scene I love where he um like the movie sets up throughout repeatedly throughout the entire film it kind of emphasizes how much he loves music and how much of a fan of music he mm, is and yeah. there's one I don't want to spoil what happens but there's one scene where he goes to a songwriter's house and has a confrontation with this songwriter uh where he gets very very angry and frustrated <laughs> Um, and he, you know, he he kind of brings emotion to the scene, so he needs to bring emotion to really well. He there's a scene where he's terrified, where an owl lady attacks him in his home, yeah. and screams and runs away, just like loads of little weird acting choices he makes throughout the entire movie. Yeah, that I just love and adore, and um, I just think the movie is a masterpiece. I love it. I really really adore this film i think that every time i watch it i f- notice different odd little bits and pieces about it and the director himself has hidden endless amounts of symbolism in there and there's all these like who is the dog killer is andrew garfield the dog killer is somebody else the dog killer well, who's this owl woman like there's just so much stuffed into it and um sydney it. sweeney weirdly is in it sydney sweeney's in it yeah it when like i a- saw her i was like oh Sydney Sweeney just popped up. I was like, yeah. "What?" It's like a yeah. Hollywood Hollywood star, whatever they call them, for the, like the escort agency uh, thing. I don't, I don't know. Um, what did you think of it when you watched it? I was just extremely confused, and there was so much happening all at once. And you go, "What?" And I, it, it, he's great in it. I don't know if I enjoyed the film. But I enjoyed his. I enjoy his performance in it. Yeah, his yeah. performance is brilliant in it. Yeah, yeah. But there was um, a lot of lot of stuff happening. A lot of like, there was a lot of information to be absorbed and trying to figure out. It's uh yeah I've, I mean because the bit it. the bit when he finds out where she is I it just felt like a dream. Yeah, it just yeah. didn't feel like reality. And so that's why when you say he found her, I was like, are you, are you sure? <laughs> Did he? Um, there's a book, there's an author called Thomas Pynchon. Do you know Thomas Pynchon? No. Uh, he, made, he wrote a book called The Catching of Something of... Mm. His famous book is called Gravity's Rainbow. I think mm. he also wrote um, a f- Inherent Vice that the film... Yeah, the, the, there's a Paul Thomas Anderson movie based on it. Uh, he, he wrote a book called The Crying of Lot 49, which is about a young um, woman who 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 f- and discovers a conspiracy theory to do with like, the post office in America. And uh, it, it has a lot of stuff to do with symbols and seeing symbols mm. in places and how it's like a hobo code. That it, And um, I read that book years ago and, and, and liked it quite a bit. And um, I think that there's a lot of DNA from that in... Under the Silver Lake as well. It just it pulls together lots of different bits and pieces that I really like uh, into one film, and then at the center of it is Andrew Garfield turning in a really good performance. It got pretty pretty rotten. It got pretty hard done by by critics when it came out, um, mm. but has developed something of a cult following since its release. Yeah, and uh, yeah, people, yeah, it's a it's a it's a real good film. I really. Mm. Um, I've seen it, I think, three or four times now. Oh, wow. <laughs> I struggled once. I was like, what, 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 <laughs> why? <laughs> oh. uh, uh, but yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's that. That's my number one. That's my favourite Andrew Garfield performance is Under the Silver Lake. Um, I want them to, I'd like to see them do a movie where he teams up with the dude from the big Lebowski and they uncover some more conspiracies. Yeah, in a very confusing way. Yeah, it'd be good. Um, What's your number one then? My number one is your number two, Tick, Tick, Boom. Really enjoyed him in that performance and that's the first time that I thought, oh, he's just, he's good. He's a, he's really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed um it brought a real uh, a real love to this character that he played and I yeah loved it. 
Good call. Nice call. Nice choice. Just solid. Okay, uh, I'll run through my top five one more time. Yep. Uh, I had a number five, Never Let Me Go. At number four, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. At number three, Boy A. At number two, Tick, Tick, Boom. And at number one, Under the Silver Lake. Nice. What, what uh, mine you? was number f- is number five, uh, Breathe. Number four, The Amazing Spider-Man. Number three, The Social Network. Number two, Never Let Me Go. And number one, Tick, Tick, Boom. Lovely stuff. I have a handful of honourable mentions. Most notably, Silence, a film we both watched this week that neither of us put on our lists. What did so you... long. Yeah. And I, you know me and Martin Scorsese and accents. I can't take two and a half hours of accents. Like, just speak English, for the love of God. <laughs> just, it was, it was good. He's great in it. I enjoyed the film because it was, it, it, it was... It was no nobody's in the right, nobody's in the wrong. It was very unbiased, like I said before. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he's great in it. Adam Driver is good in it as well. He is. Liam I'm just Neeson. Not very good at. Ah, yeah, Liam Neeson. Yeah, he's good. But Liam Neeson is always Liam Neeson, isn't he? I really liked the Japanese actor who plays the um... <laughs> Kichijiro. <laughs> well, there's yeah, there's Kichijiro who's very funny in it, and you know, is very very good. Yeah. Um, but I I really liked the sort of um. He's like the translator. He's he's the villain that in the second half of the movie is constantly whispering in. Oh yeah. Um, Andrew yeah. Garfield's ear, and yeah. just breaking him down step by step by step. Um. Yeah. What was his name? I think it was. Da 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 da. Ta- Taranobu Asano, who played the interpreter. Okay. Uh, it was good, yeah. He's really, really good in it. Um, it is. It's a brilliant movie, but it could, like it could have been. It could have been probably an hour and forty five minutes long. Really, like it did yeah. need to be two hours and forty minutes. Like there was a lot no. of very extended sequences of not very much happening. Um, yeah. Uh, but you know, and, and and Andrew Garfield plays it well, and it ends. You know, it ends up being quite um sad in the way that Andrew Garfield movies tend to be. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I thought it was. Yeah. I thought it was interesting that it very much like before watching it, I was like, "Oh, it's got Adam Driver, it's got Andrew Garfield, it's got Liam Neeson." Mm. Uh, I didn't realize that it really is an Andrew Garfield film. Like he is the main yeah. character very much so yeah. throughout the film. Um, yeah, yeah, it's um, it's okay. It's a it's a good movie, but it's too yeah. long. I will never ever watch it again ever. No, um, never, never, never. Uh, also on my list of uh, honourable mentions is The Amazing Spider-Man, which you've covered, you know, great. Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, one of the most, yeah. ex- you know, everyone in the cinema cheering, Andrew Garfield arriving in the film, yeah. it's pretty great to see. Uh, the Eyes of Tammy Faye yeah. is, a, is perfectly good. The Social Network, which you mentioned, and Hacksaw Ridge, where I don't particularly like the movie, but he puts in a good role. And uh, I think that's pretty much everything. Have you got any honourable mentions? Oh, yeah, Spider-Man No Way Home. I thought he was really... It was brilliant in it. Uh, the eyes of Tommy Faye. Um, mainstream, just because he's good in it, but it's just a bad film. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's just he's just good in it, and M- Mia Hawk is amazing in it as well. So yeah. Cool. Um, do you want a homework assignment? Yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to find it, but boy, a if you can, I'd yeah, like to know what you think. Perfect. Of it. Um, it might be easier for you outside of the UK because I think I, it's not on streaming anywhere here because I think ITV probably still have the rights to it. Whereas oh, okay. internationally, it's more likely to be try and findable find on streaming things. It might even be on YouTube. I don't know, but but I think you'd. I'd, I'd like to know what you think of it. So boy, a. yeah. Would you like to watch Breathe? No, but I will. Good. Or mainstream, but that's not in my top five. No, I know. But I definitely would like an opinion on mainstream. Yeah. I'll try and watch it. But I'll, I'll watch Breathe. But you know how I feel about biopics. Don't expect me to come back and give it a good review. What? I, I did not say that the film was good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said that I think him as an actor, he's really good in it. Cool. I think I think that's the thing. Okay. Like, I, I'd, the film I could easily do without, but I feel his <sighs> performance. And I, th- I think that's why I chose it, because he's... He can make a film that's like meh into 
something enjoyable to watch. Yeah, he's great, isn't he? He's so good. Mm. Mm. Um, he's got a new TV show coming out soon called Under the Banner of Heaven that I'm really excited yeah. to, to watch. Uh, it looks a bit tricky. What do you mean? Well, it's about religion and dying and, well, somebody killing somebody religiously. Yeah. 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 Um, cool. Well, I've got a recommendation for people. They should go and check out the graphic novel Bone by Jeff Smith. It's pretty brilliant. And uh, that's all I've got this week in terms of that. What have you got? Watch Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and enjoy it. Yeah. Um, Enjoy the madness. Enjoy the madness. Embrace the madness. Um, And then uh, all that's left to say is that please can you go, please can you just bloody well go... (laughs) To Apple Podcasts and review us and rate us. Thank you very much. And uh, tell your friends about us and uh, get the word out. We'd love to, you to do that. It'd be wonderful. And um, we would really appreciate it as well if you got in touch with us to tell us what you think about any of our lists or reviews or opinions or share yours as well. Uh, you can email us at culturebucketpodcast.gmail.com and uh, you can also message us on various social media platforms and the links to all of those can be found in the show notes for this and every episode along with a list of everything we've discussed in Culture Catch-Up and my tube coming up next time um is uh, a special on moon Knight, the latest marvel tv series so please join us next time for a breakdown of moon Knight, uh where we'll be discussing um uh stephen grant mark specter Konshu, and all the rest yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, so yeah, join us for that. Okay, I love you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye 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 b